What's up everyone, Eric here from Hardware for Gamers. AMD and their board partners have been putting out some really good deals on some of their older video cards. So I decided to buy two RX 580s. So I'm going to be making two RX 580 videos. This one will be on the gaming performance of the card. And I'm going to be getting a little bit into Crossfire as well. But just FYI, Crossfire is a pretty bad idea. The second video is going to be more of the technical, where I'll be taking a look at how well the cooler performs, and then I'll be tearing it down and taking a look at how the card is made. So I'm not going to go too much into the overall specs of the card. It is an 8GB RX 580 with the core clock of 1366. The card has one DVI port, two HDMI ports, and two display ports. The MSI Radeon RX 580 Armor X is what this card is being sold as. The box doesn't have an X on it. Now I believe MSI is just reusing some of their old packaging because I'm pretty sure there was an MSI variant with the name Armor OC or something like that. So just watch out for that, especially if you're buying these on the used market. And that is because I believe the X variant has a better cooler. Now I'm gonna be throwing out the benchmarks for a single RX 580, but first the test bench. The CPU is a Ryzen 5 3600 at 4.2 GHz on all cores. The motherboard is an ASRock X470 Tai Chi. The RAM is two 8 gig sticks of Corsair Vengeance 3600 overclocked to CL16. The CPU cooler is the Fractal Design Celsius S24. The power supply is the EVGA 650GQ. The game drive is a Team Group 1TB SATA 3 SSD. The OS drive is a 250 gig Western Digital Blue SATA 3 M.2 SSD, and all tests were performed on an open air test bench. On a single RX 580, Far Cry 5 had an average FPS of just under 70, with the 1% lows at 62. Rainbow Six Siege in DirectX 11 had an average FPS of 106, with the 1% lows at just about 88. In Vulcan, it had an average FPS of just under 115, with the 1% lows at 100. Division 2 in DirectX 11 had an average FPS of 47.6, with the 1% lows dropping to 34. In DirectX 12, it had an average FPS of just about 53, with the 1% lows being at 41. World War Z in DirectX 11 had an average FPS of almost 88, with the 1% lows going down to 72. In Vulcan, it had an average FPS of 104, with the 1% lows at 90. Borderlands 3 in DirectX 11, the average FPS was almost 40, with the 1% lows at 32. In DirectX 12, the average FPS was just over 40, with the 1% lows at 34. For Warhammer Vermintide 2 in DirectX 12, the average FPS was just under 70, with the 1% lows at 56. And in DirectX 11, the average FPS was just over 70, with the 1% lows at 55. There you have it, RX 580 like results on an RX 580. The next thing I wanted to look at was, is Crossfire still a thing? Out of the six games I normally test, only one of them actually worked in Crossfire, and that being Far Cry 5. Now there is a Crossfire game compatibility list online that says Warhammer Vermintide 2 has an official Crossfire profile, but the Crossfire wouldn't activate when trying to launch the game. And as far as I can tell, with the new Adrenaline software, I can't force a game to go into Crossfire. Is Crossfire still a thing? Short answer, no. There's a pretty good chance if the game was made after 2018, there will not be a Crossfire profile. Now in reality, if the games you play are more than three years old, then maybe check the list. Now there's more than just the massive game support issues with Crossfire, because if I turned on FreeSync on my FreeSync monitor, the screen flickered like it was trying to give somebody a seizure. This only happened when FreeSync was on and both cards were in the system. Now I'm not sure if this was a Windows thing or an AMD Adrenaline driver thing, but I'm pretty sure I had some mini seizures. I tested three other games that were on that list, Watch Dogs 2, Mad Max, and Dying Light. More benchmarks. Now in Far Cry 5, 
in DirectX 11 with the single card, again had an average FPS of almost 70, with the 1% lows at 62. Now in Crossfire, the average FPS went up a fair bit to 105, but if you take a look at the 1% lows, they're significantly lower at 46. We are seeing a fair bit of micro stutter in Far Cry 5. In Dying Light, with a single RX 580, we had an average FPS of 92, with the 1% lows going down to 72. Now in Crossfire, we get some excellent scaling, with the average FPS going up to almost 164, with the 1% low at 107. Watch Dogs 2 with a single RX 580 had an average FPS of 42, with the 1% low being at 34. In Crossfire, Watch Dogs 2 had an average FPS of 55, with the 1% lows being at 40. Mad Max with a single RX 580 had an average FPS of 133, with the 1% low being at 120. Now in Mad Max, we're getting nearly, if not 100% scaling, with an average FPS of 263, and the 1% lows were at 172. So depending on the game, like Mad Max and Dying Light both had some excellent scaling, with Watch Dogs 2 being kind of so-so. Now in Far Cry 5, I'm positive I could not play that game with that kind of micro stutter. Well, that's all I got for this one, all the normal stuff. If you like the video, you know what to do. Click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. And as always, thanks for watching, and see you next time.